All right, quick front yard test of the Decade CM10 transmitter. Um, certainly not in an open field. As you can see, the transmitter is here on a wooden pole in front of a big pine tree. Antenna currently is horizontal. It is exactly seven feet from the ground as uh, outlined in the Potomac Field Intensity Meter Model 71 manual. I am powering it with a 12 volt lantern battery because I had one and I didn't want to run an extension cord. The cord that runs from the lantern battery to the transmitter is exactly the same length as the cord supplied with the transmitter that goes to the power supply. And we're pumping in audio from my iPhone. I've already tested to ensure that turning the iPhone on and off has no effect on the field strength readings from the transmitter. We're testing in 92.7. Over here we have the FIM 71. We're going to have to deal with the sound of kids playing in the neighborhood and people mowing their lawn. Its receiving antenna is also horizontally polarized. It is exactly seven feet from the ground and it is exactly three meters from the transmitting antenna of the Decade CM10 off there on the pole. So we're currently running in what I would consider to be a typical operation. Horizontal antenna, seven feet off the ground, 12 volt uh, power supply, and audio coming from basically an MP3 player like a typical guy would have with a typical audio cable uh, running up to it, which is, uh, I don't know, it's probably, what, six feet long maybe? It's the standard eighth inch mini plug stereo cable you buy at your average store. So let's take a look now at our uh, field strength meter and see where we are. Now at the moment, we're in calibration mode because I'd like to demonstrate that we are properly calibrated. My original plan was to put the camera on a tripod pointing at the, uh, at the field strength meter and do these tests, except that uh, the only thing I had to set the camera on was a giant aluminum ladder, and I thought that may screw things up a little bit, so I didn't want to do that. But we put this on calibrate. It's turned on. You can see we're not quite, uh, quite there, so you tweak this control for exact calibration at zero dBs, even though we're going to do our readings in uh, millivolts and uh, microvolts. So now you can see we are calibrated right on the zero. We turn off the calibration. We bring her down to where we think we're going to be. We make sure we're tuned in for maximum signal strength. I'm using Christmas music as my audio source, so I always know I'm on my station. As you can see, we're reading almost exactly five millivolts here. Not microvolts, but millivolts. That's five, ladies and gentlemen. Way beyond any possible concept of legal at a three meter distance. It's a wonderful Christmas song, though. Is this legal if we have a Canadian transmitter? I don't know. We're not even considering yet the antenna factor, which at this uh, frequency is approximately 2.25. So we take this uh, reading times 2.25, which is going to give us well over 10 uh, millivolts here. So you can see this, this baby's not even close to being legal. Now let's try some other phenomenon, shall we? And I really wish I could leave the camera here, but I can't. So we'll go over to our transmitter now. And uh, I imagine most people would set this on a counter and have their antenna in a horizontal uh, configuration to the rest of the world. So let's move the antenna straight up and see what kind of effect that has on our field strength. As you can see, we've had a rather dramatic loss in field strength, although still we're at about 2.2 uh, millivolts, which is still well beyond anything even close to legal. A full-scale reading here is 10 MVs, as you can see by the uh, full-scale selector knob there. So you do uh, cut your radiated signal at this distance about in half. So now, let's put it back into the horizontal position so we're getting the maximum uh, field strength once again. And we'll demonstrate some of the things that make the, uh, that show you the incredible variables here. And we're back to horizontal. We're seven feet above. And again, you can see we're back to right around five um, millivolts once again. Now watch this for an interesting phenomenon. Let's unplug the audio cable. We'll make no other changes but the removal of the audio cable. Now, of course, our radio has gone silent. But if we come back, we see that, look at that, the removal of the uh, audio cable 
has caused our signal to drop from 5 to about 3.2 um, millivolts. So that shows you how much we can add to the uh, radiating signal by simply applying an audio cable to our transmitter. You'll have to excuse me while I set the camera down to plug the audio back in. Wonderful shot of the northern Minnesota sky for y'all, I imagine. There. We have returned the audio cable. And you can see that we're now back to almost 5 millivolts. A little less, actually. Looks like about 4.9. But you can do other things. Like, let's say you rearrange your power cable. In this case, I'll just move the battery off to the side here. And we'll go back and take another reading. Well, look at that. Relocating the position of the power cable, which is the same length. All I did was move it so that it's going out at about a 45 degree angle from the transmitter. And we've dropped off to about 3.9 millivolts. So that shows how just moving your transmitter and its various cables around can dramatically change the output from your transmitter. There. Now we're at about 4.9 once again. And I don't know that I got the cable in exactly the same position where we started, but we've clearly demonstrated that at exactly 3 meters and exactly 7 feet above the ground, with a exactly 3 meters and 7 feet with a calibrated Potomac FIM-71, that remember now, these readings you're seeing still need to be multiplied by the antenna factor of 2.25. So when this is showing you 5, that's really well over 10 uh, millivolts of signal strength at this distance. Legal in the U.S.? Not even close. Legal in Canada? Probably not. You'd have to do the math to extrapolate the field strength at the Canadian distance. But I don't think that uh, that's going to work out either. So, dandy, uh, dandy transmitter to get out a great signal, but legal? Hardly. And again, this is not out in the open field. And uh, no, pine trees do not reflect signal. I've already determined that by comparing this reading to field readings. In fact, my experience in AM broadcasting is trees near the, on the grounds near the antenna site actually reduce the pattern of a signal because some signal is uh, grabbed by the trees and bled off the ground. Not a lot, but when you have a lot of trees, it makes quite a difference. So again, I don't consider this a scientific test, but again, it's showing you the dramatic differences in plugging an audio cable, rearranging your power cable, changing horizontal to vertical, and whatnot. So I hope you found this interesting, and I'm sure that all the experts out there in Radio Land will have a blast picking this apart. You know, they may have tested this particular species of pine tree and determined that it reflects signals at 6.8% or something, but even when you take into account uh, tolerances, you don't even come out close to being legal.